stakeholders are Lord and President Bola Tinumbu for the attention is given to the education sector since he assumed office. The President had earlier expressed his commitment to invest more in education and research with a view to making graduates contribute significantly to tackling the myriad of challenges faced in the country. He made good his promise when he recently passed the Student Loans Act Bill 2024 into law and appointed Jim Ovia, the chairman of the board of the Nigerian Education Loan Fund. Well, we are now being joined by the Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, to speak on the achievements and challenges of the education sector under the Tinumbu administration. Good to have you on the show, Honorable Minister. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Thank you very much for having me, although it's a bit low. The voice is... Okay, I'll try to project... The voice is still low. I'll try to project a bit so that you can hear me clearly. Okay. Well, let's start, you know, with some of the achievements that have Thank been recorded you. so far in the education sector under this current administration. Can you tell us some of those achievements? Well, thank you very much, uh, Rice, for having me this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, let me start with uh, first understanding where we are coming from. Uh, the education sector, as you know, it's a sector which has a very long chain, uh, starting from uh, primary school right through the tertiary education. And uh, in between, we have problems with uh, those who have gone out of school, usually called out of school, and then problems about the quality of education. And uh, at all the levels, especially at the foundation level. So, uh, and then some of the intervention the government have made uh, to provide support to students who uh, need some support when they are in education. And um, clearing some problems which were affecting efficient management of the universities, the polytechnics and colleges education in terms of the IPPAs and their removal, you know, so that they have their autonomy. So these are some of the thickets that were removed, you know, so that we can have very smooth management of those institutions. But for us in the, in the ministry, uh, important as those things are, terribly important as they are, what we have been focusing on in the last seven uh, months is to go into the foundational issues affecting education right from uh, primary, secondary school, so that we can research the education sector in Nigeria and uh, so that we can have proper quality education at those levels, primary, basic education, secondary school. And in that way, uh, we'll have a very sound and solid um, set of products at all the levels of our education system. So what we did uh, all this while is to understand the problems and uh, what we need to do. And that we've been able to do, and we are now set to implement the solutions which we have uh, put in place to address uh, problems of quality at the foundation level of our education, uh, from primary school, secondary school, and of course, as I said, right through uh, the university. Now, if I may continue, uh, some of these issues are what we intend to, what we are already uh, rolling out for implementation is, uh, first of all, you know, everything that anybody wants to do, is, in particular institutions, you need data, you need information, you need statistics for you to plan and then make meaningful uh, interventions uh, in whatever that uh, you want to do. Right now, as we are speaking, uh, we, we don't have an integrated, coordinated data system in the country on our schools, on our teachers, and then on even the learners themselves. Uh, nobody can tell you exactly how many schools we will have in Nigeria, at, uh, especially at the foundation level, primary, secondary school. And then the condition of those schools, you know, uh, apart from what we see in the other areas, 
And uh, so, so we, we, we don't know how they are. And then the facilities for learning in all those schools across the country. And you know, there are hundreds of thousands of schools, both public and private. And uh, so uh, we want to be able to know from each local government, you know, what schools we have, uh, schools, secondary schools, and uh, other institutions that are there, so that uh, from uh, from the ministry, and from the governor's office, and from the local government secretariat, they will be able to intervene. They know the condition of every school they have, and they know uh, what facilities are in those schools, and all that. Uh, so we are going to do that. The president has approved it. And then secondly, we also want to know the teachers across all the schools, uh, those with qualifications, those who have qualifications, those who have received training over the years, what type of training, and, and whether in fact they are actually attending classes and when they ought to. And uh, so, we, uh, so that we know what type of support you know, to give uh, uh, the t this, these teachers. And then, of course, in the lab, we want to know about the learners right across. How many do we have? How many people, students do we have from primary school? How many girls? How many boys? Uh, where are girls uh, not doing well? Why are they, uh, where are they out of school? And, and what are the reasons why they are out of school? And what do we need to do? And, uh, and then in some parts of the country, the issue is not even about girls not going to school. In some places, actually boys not going to schools. So we want to have that, we want to harvest that inter uh, statistic for the entire uh, country. So that's one thing that we want to, baseline we want to establish so that when we talk about number of students in school in Nigeria, uh, UNESCO won't be quoting something different, World Bank will be quoting something different from what we have in the ministry. And then we know where the problems are. Uh, but uh, when we intervene, we'll be able to intervene. So that's one, uh, for me, a breakthrough project that we want to achieve. Then secondly, uh, there's what is called um, learning crisis, quality of learning at that foundation level, where we have uh, students, people unable even to read and write, uh, properly, or even where they read and write, uh, cannot understand actually what they have read. And uh, that's for us, it's a big crisis for the country because it has to do with the quality of uh, young ones who are the future of the country. So we are coming down squarely on that. And then when they finish, you know, a lot of students, barely, only barely 20% of them uh, finish to university. The rest of the 80, they remain in our midst with practically nothing to do. They have no quality. They are not in school. They are not in any form of training. They are not doing anything. So what we are, the solution we have is, for that is to come up with, uh, to, with skills, you know, so that from primary school right through secondary school, we will develop, and we are already working on it, some skill sets for each level of school, of education. So at primary school, you will have some set of skills, uh, trades, uh, craftsmanship, whatever it is, so that you can have a meaningful life. At the, uh, at the basic education level, you know, the... The Minimum Standards Act of 1985, uh, up to the basic education level, a student will graduate with not only general knowledge, but also some basic skills that he cannot engage in the economy and the society, uh, even if he doesn't proceed to, uh, to for further education. All right. And, uh, All right, and professor. that applies to if you continue with, with secondary school. Yes. All right, Professor. So I... that's just two for now. We still have uh, two more. Yeah, but that's just what we have set out to do, right? Uh, 
in, for, in the education sector. Okay, great. Um, just for the sake of time, I had to interrupt you. I know we've gone over some of the challenges that the education sector faces. You were just talking about the quality of education and also out of school children. I do want to discuss insecurity, which has been at the forefront uh, uh, within the education sector, we've seen school, school children um, taken from their premises uh, in manners that have been to, uh, that have been quite absurd. But uh, what is being done in order to protect more children on school campuses or even sensitize uh, individuals about uh, procedures when things go awry? We do know that. Uh, there was the Inspector General of Police back in 2023 announced the school protection squad in the north. Um, and uh, these things are being implemented slowly. Are there any more plans to bolster the uh, security or protection for school children, especially those that are in the north? Thank you. Yes, the safety of schools the children, for the children, and, and their teachers. It's extremely important in the country because uh, above anything else, I mean, life is the most important thing. So, and then for them even to have the confidence to go, go to school and remain in school, they have to have the assurance that they will be safe in those schools. So that will certainly impact on enrollment. And uh, so that has received tremendous attention uh, from the ministry, working with the relevant uh, uh, security agencies. Now, what we have been doing is to identify, first of all, vulnerable schools around the country, and then uh, undertake some form of, uh, uh, provide some form of fence. Even in Abuja here, uh, we, are, we are doing some fencing for some of our schools. But more importantly, the security agencies, all the security agencies are now involved. And uh, we've set up the national uh, uh, safety center here in, uh, in Abuja with all the security uh, agencies involved with a mechanism that will bring on board or have information on all schools in Nigeria and for all the schools to be able to, uh, through the Safe Schools Project, for all the schools to be able to engage uh, a lot security agencies if there is threat of uh, attack. And uh, that's one. And then secondly, under that framework too, uh, there's massive sensitization going on of relevant stakeholders uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the schools, school authorities, in terms of the security agencies, and then the community around schools, so that once they uh, sense any danger to schools, they will be able to very quickly uh, pass information to the National Self School Center in, uh, in Abuja here. And of course, we also expect that all these centers will be established in all the states and uh, all, the, with all the schools connected to them so that there can be very rapid response when there is an, uh, a problem of safety um, in respect of any school in Nigeria. Now, Honorable Minister, you talked about the president approving the National Education Data System. Now, I'm wondering, you know, how long it will take to compile all this data, and does this mean that the urgent needed interventions will be delayed until we have this data? No, it's not delaying anything. It's not. The programs of the ministry and the programs of addressing uh, all the other issues are ongoing. And this, uh, the data uh, depository we are having, you know, is expected to be concluded by end of this year, you know, and uh, that in, the, in its first phase. Uh, so it's not stopping anything at all. It's just for us to establish a baseline on all the uh, on all the information that we need to harvest affecting all aspects of the education sector. Because right now, as we are talking, as we are speaking, we are also addressing the issues that are out of school. If you remember, we are just about uh, a month ago in, in March, to be precise, uh, we gave us statistics that we were able to 
clear about 2 million Nigerians who are out of school through various agencies of, of uh, the ministry. And then we are also ramping up you know, the training of teachers on the use of technology uh, in order to ensure that they are uh, technology driven, they can take the technology to the classroom. Uh, so all the programs of the ministry are running, uh, are, are running are on course. It's just that uh, when we have, by the time we have that data, it will be much more efficient. And uh, we, know we can pinpoint, you know, areas of intervention specifically with precision. But otherwise, at the moment, everything that we need to do, uh, that we need to do uh, is, uh, is ongoing. For the future in terms of the education uh, system, in your opinion? I beg your pardon? The prospects for the future, the good things that we should be expecting from the Ministry of Education and some other projects that are uh, being worked upon to improve the quality of education and the output of education within the country. Yes, the legacy this government is going to leave to this country by the time we are through with all our plans is the quality of education that matches what it obtains in the rest of the world. Where our students can not only read and write at the foundation level, but they can understand what they say. They can be conscious of uh, technology and uh, apply, be engaged. That's also part of what is going to be integrated in the new curriculum that will come with the skills that I mentioned earlier on and uh, the, the, the teachers. So overall, we are going to have an education system that matches the rest of the world uh, in terms of quality and uh, quality of the students, in terms of uh, the uh, teachers who are well motivated and who are conscientious and uh, who will engage you know, with an education system that is relevant. And um, so this is kind of thing that we are setting our eyes on. Because right at the moment, uh, the country is struggling, you know, for that. And then we will have an education system where uh, every child in Nigeria will be in school and learning, and not out of school, uh, because they, they will have a school system, you know, that is actually uh, uh, attractive and uh, meeting their needs and yearnings. And so these are the kind of things that we want to be put to the... I keep on using the word reset. We need to reset the education system. We know there isn't much time, but by going to the foundation level, we'll be able to address that so that from there, uh, it's a question of building the appropriate foundation. The type of foundation we had in the 60s, you know, and early 70s, which unfortunately uh, we lost along the, along the line because of uh, a lack of planning. So the whole system simply grew like an untended flower. And uh, so now we are tending that flower. It's a beautiful plant, a beautiful flower. We need to grow in a beautiful way, in, a, in such a way that. Uh, Every uh, person who views it or who participates in it will see the value for it. Now, in March, we know that our members of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities went on strike over non-payment of arrears of salary for, of its members. I'm wondering what efforts have been made now to meet their demands you know, and avert a future strike since that was just a warning strike. Thank you. Uh, the president, President uh, Ahmed Bola Tinubu, is, has invested, is, has said times without number that he wants to have stability in the education sector because st instability is a very serious virus. It erodes the quality of education. And uh, so he is interested in having an education system where there is complete stability in calendar so that we can, our education providers can also engage with their international counterparts because that also affects uh, 
uh, internationalization of education because people will not be able to uh, engage with you if they know there is instability in the system. So what, we, what he has done is to ensure that, uh, first of all, he was able to clear what uh, due to ASU, uh, the government, the president graciously paid off uh, uh, ASU. And then there was an initial hiccup in uh, what is due to the rest of the uh, unions. This is now being addressed. And I believe uh, very soon this issue will be, uh, will, be, will be history. So it's ongoing. The matter is being addressed. Well, we sincerely hope so as well. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, uh, Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman. Thanks for joining us on Newsday.